You're watching Nevada Business Chronicles. Take a journey with us to see the innovative businesses that put Nevada on the business map. Connecting you with the businesses, events, and organizations that bring innovation and prosperity to the Nevada area, please welcome your host, Mitch Burney. Just a few miles outside of Reno in Red Rock, Nevada, lies one of Nevada's most hidden treasures. It is a privilege to introduce you to Lynn Lloyd with her cockatoo, Apple, and one of the newest members of her hound fleet, uh, Gimlet. All right. Welcome you to the show. Thank you very much. Before we even tell them what the Red Rock Hounds is, your story about how you wound up here is fantastic. I left Pennsylvania with one dog and two horses and ran out of gas in Reno, and it's the best thing that ever happened to me. And 35 years later, you have the Red Rock Hounds. Correct. And describe to us what Red Rock Hounds is. It's a hunting club, a fox hunting club. Everybody joins and we go hunting three days a week, nine months out of the year. Full English dress style fox hunting. Right. Just outside of Reno. I have lived here since 1992, only recently found out about you. I think there are gonna be a lot of people so excited to see what you do here. Let's show them. Okay, thank you. Come on there, pup. You get up pretty darn early to prepare for today's hunt. Yes, we do. We get up about six, but thank goodness for help that we have. That makes it all a lot easier. Well, where do you start preparing for a hunt? Well, like everything in life, preparation is, is what it's about. So we started months ago getting the horses conditioned for hunting. So now we're in, a, in the hunt season. We pull them in, brush them up, put their tack on, load them into the trailer, and off we go. Got a little ruckus going on in the background here. What do we do next? We're going to go in there and separate the hounds that we want to take today. And of course, they all want to go. You can tell they're excited yeah, and you're ready to go. Yeah, yeah. So we're going to pick out the ones we want for the day. Let's pick them out. Yeah. What kind of uh, dogs are these and how do you pick the ones that go on the hunt? Um, these are walker hounds and I pick the hounds depending on what we're doing that day and where we're going. Where do we start? We start with a stirrup cup, and you can do it on, if you're on the horse, which is how it got its name, because you were the person giving it to you was stirrup level. And we also know it as liquid courage. Well, salute, so, cheers. Here's to a good hunt. Problems up. And our new friends. I can see we're training some horses in the ring today, and I understand you do that for several different reasons. I do. One, to train the horse, to make him a, I mean, they have to get educated just like the rider does, so we train the horses in the ring, we train the riders in the ring so that we can get them out fox hunting with us if that's what they want to do, or into the show world or whatever part of riding they want to do. I mean, a lot of them just go off and trail ride, which is great too. 
And Anything. I, I understand that you uh, will buy horses, train them for different types of riders mm -hmm. and different levels, mm -hmm. and then sell them as well out here. Correct. We do a lot of that. A great place to look for horses. For exactly. I can see where this would come in handy for all different levels of training, one for the fox hunting and then for training riders for other sports as well or just out in the field riding. Correct. And also if they want to compete. In the fox hunt, I'm really intrigued that there are three different levels of the fox hunt. So let's talk about those. Okay. They, um, you can go first field, which is up with the hounds and the, and the huntsman and the field master going very fast if the hounds get on a the line. Then you have second, and, and we have to jump fences sometimes on the, in the first field. Second field might go as fast, but a little more carefully and not over jumps. And then we have the final field, which is third field, leisure field. They go along, sometimes they sit on the top of a hill with their flasks and watch everything happening below them. So at, at any level, this can be done. And then if somebody comes in in the leisure field, uh -huh. goes, wow, this is fantastic quality of life, lifestyle. I mean, really, that's all you can call this is a, a lifestyle choice. Sure. Then they can progress up to the front and they don't have to feel intimidated if they're an inexperienced rider because you can train them here as well. Exactly. We've got the horses to train them on. And then if they want to buy a horse, we've got horses we can sell them and we do the whole thing. Mitch, this is Cart. Hi, Cart. He's one of our horses that, that is boarding here. And so you do boarding on the property? Correct. How many Correct. stalls do you have? We have 42. And you have a lot of space outside for horses as well. Correct. Mm -hmm. You have uh, how many acres do you have here, Lynn? We have about 640 acres. So a lot of room for indoor and outdoor boarding. Yes. And this is cart. So do you not put the cart before the cart or the horse before the horse? <laughs> Which one is it? I can't figure that out. some of the outdoor pastures that we have. So there's lots of pasture area for the horses to be turned out. Even if they come in during the night, they still get turned out in the day with the rest of the herd. And I think that's so important for their psyche. So I'm really glad that we've got the room for it. Well, these horses really look like they're having a quality of life. <laughs> yeah, I think they do. I, I don't feel sad for them at all. <laughs> no, no, I think they're pretty happy. This is the hound's house, bigger than a lot of people's houses. Yes. And their backyards are also bigger than most people's properties as well. Correct. The each, I've got three runs in here that are inside and then they go out to five acres on each run. So all day long they can go in or out whenever they wish and then there's flow through water. So I never carry a bucket. And then one thing I want people to understand is these dogs love the hunt. Mm -hmm. When you walk inside, they're screaming, pick me, pick me. I know, and it's always so sad when I have to leave somebody behind because they all want to go and I can't take a hundred at one time. At the end of each hunt, you actually have a tradition here and you have a clubhouse for that. After hunting, you usually share, break bread, have some kind of meal, so we always have lunch. Mo a lot of times it's back here at the clubhouse, other times it's different restaurants around wherever we are because I like to support the community that we're in when we're riding. and. Well, if there's a restaurant there, we'll go to that, but the clubhouse is for the local, so we have a place to come back and eat. And you have some chefs, real quality chefs, we that do. prepare some of these we meals. Do. I can see the sponsors board here, but you also have memberships as well. Tell me a little bit how that works. The memberships, when you join, therefore you can hunt three days a week with us nine months out of the year, because that's, that's how long we hunt. And the sponsors board are the people that throw in more money, because it takes a tremendous amount to feed the hounds, and their health care and all that goes in with taking care of a hundred hounds. So these people are the ones that throw in extra to help with that bill. Lynn, it has been such a privilege coming out here and chronicling your business and being able to share you with all of our viewers. I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for having us out here. Thank you, thank you, because I love sharing it with you. So and I appreciate it. I can't wait for people to see this. There are going to be people that right now are going to pick up the phone and want to come down here and, and give this a try. How do they do that? Call me at 775-969-3243 or go on the web at uh, redrockhounds.com. That's Lynn Lloyd, owner of Red Rock Hounds. And thank, you. thank you so much thank for keeping you. this tradition thank alive you in our much. community. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. For more information on this guest or to see this show in its entirety, visit nvbusinesschronicles.com. While you're there, you can watch all of our past shows on the Chronicles page and stay connected with us by following us on our social media. Now more from Nevada Business Chronicles.
o'clock in the morning and while you're fast asleep, we're here at Joseph's Vienna Bakery. Well, they're getting ready for your morning goodies. We're here with Sonia, the owner of Joseph's. Thank you for being on our show. Good morning. And Hector, one of your master bakers. Master bakers for 24 years. Coming up on a quarter of a century, we won't give away his age. Right. <laughs> well, I can't wait to show everybody what it takes to prepare for their day. So let's get started. big part of your business, I'm guessing, birthday cakes, cakes in general? Absolutely, that's what we've no, been known for and Marissa has decorated many of them. This is our more simple cake with just a message on it. That looks like a whole bunch of yumminess to me. More than that. <laughs> now is Ruben gonna make us a gingerbread house? Yes, popular houses for Christmas. Oh, I bet you they're really popular for the holidays. A lot of people know Joseph's have been in our community for a, a number of years, but a lot of people don't realize how far back that really goes. Yes, 1980 we opened. He opened the store after he came up here with the MGM and wanted to live in this kind of weather and, and, and uh, the mountains. He was from Austria, so this felt at home for him. Well, and at that time, people really hadn't embraced the high-end Vienna bakery style at that point, had they? No. Uh, Reno was basically a donut and uh, sheet cake town, and we had to change that. Well, good thing you did, because here we are decades later and still the standard of our community. So our pastry chef, Ruben, here is making uh, Napoleons. This Nap is one of my personal favorites. I'm sure I'm not alone. Um, many people, yes, and it is basically a, a thousand leaf dough that is then filled with French cream, as he's doing right now, then with a raspberry fruit filling and iced with fondant. So this is our finished Napoleon after we've put it in a cold refrigerator and we slice them into this size and this is how they look in our case. Absolutely beautiful. Everything here is though. This is my daughter Marissa. She's Hello, been Marissa. with me. Nice to meet you, Mitch. She's been with us for many years and does a lot of our specialty decorating. As you can see, she's doing our turkeys for Thanksgiving now. We airbrush, we sugar. We do everything to make it look like this beautiful cookie right there. Sonia, I have never seen anything like this. This is my favorite. These are fantastic. This is what I mean, how much fun this is. This part of our bakery is endlessly creative, and Marissa is good at it. This is called our Lola cookie. It's a chocolate cookie on the bottom. Then we fill it with this caramel. Then we take chocolate, and we just put it on top for just a little bit of extra flavor. Where would you typically find a croquembush? Uh, it comes from France originally, and we make them for weddings mostly, but also around the holidays. It's your centerpiece dessert for your holiday table. These are our petit fours. We literally sell thousands and thousands of these every month. That's what Ruben was saying. I can see why, they're like mini cakes. Mini cakes made of layers of almond cake, raspberry, buttercream, and then it's topped with a fondant icing. 
and then drizzled with love. And decorated with love, yes. And again, we do these seasonally. I saw some of these on your website for Valentine's Day. They're yes. incredible. Sonia, something you didn't know about me is growing up as a kid, this was my favorite, favorite dessert of my life. The chocolate eclair? Oh, absolutely. But I've never seen it done with almonds. Well, that's our little extra touch. And a chocolate eclair is our second most popular pastry in the bakery. And it is a pâte choux dough that is filled with French cream. Mm. And we cut them and fill it with the cream and then you get to eat it. lot of people hungry right now. Yes. Well, what kind of muffins are these it's are you making? It's a brand pecan muffins. Oh, they look delicious, don't they? Yes. And so the other flavor that's sitting over there waiting is what flavor? Uh, apple oatmeal. Apple oatmeal. We're going to put a streusel. It's a walnuts and brown sugar. What's next? I'm going to make bread, fresh bread. Fresh bread every yes, day. Yes. yes. Deal. It's a uh, proof for making a uh, uh, bigger size. Makes the dough rise. Right. Oh, fantastic. Yeah, I'll keep it for 25 minutes. And then into the oven. And I bake in the oven for 45 minutes. This machine, every pass, makes it thinner right. and thinner and yes. thinner. Yeah. And then we're going to make some puff pastries.
all so beautiful. How do you even choose? Oh my choose? gosh, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, well, if you like something fruity, I would go maybe with a mango or raspberry. But see, those remind me of Paris, like chocolate, vanilla. Oh my gosh. Like home. Like totally like home. Yeah, yeah. You come here often. I do. I love it because it reminds me of being in a French bakery, you know, back home, and I just I love it. I, look at that. It's beautiful. Even with all the things we've shown being made today, we've only scratched the surface. Only a fraction of those are in this case. There's so much more that you do. It's unbelievable. Yes, and all the products that we have, we thought would be a great idea to start a cafe and serve these things to our customers. Why not? You have the freshest breads, bagels, English muffins. Great idea. Let's go show them the cafe. Great. So what treats are we going to make today? Well, this is Magdalena. She's making our Eggs Benedict. One of my personal favorites. A lot of people's, I'm sure. Very famous for doing this. And she's going to be doing the toasting of our own muffins that we bake ourselves. So we have freshly made, freshly toasted English muffins. Right now my mouth's watering. Yes, and she's now putting the poached eggs on it. And now she's putting our homemade special hollandaise sauce on top of the eggs, which is traditional for Egg Benedict. Of course, this is our most popular dish and has been for many years. I see some jalapenos in this one. It's a vegetarian omelet that has uh, zucchini, broccoli, jalapenos, feta cheese, and spinach, and fresh made salsa. I love that you get a fresh scone, freshly made here, with your egg omelets as well. This is our breakfast crepe that we're doing. It has a meat and vegetable filling, oh. and we top it with hollandaise. One of our most popular items is our savory crepes. It's everything made from scratch, as you can see. Sonia, I understand people come from all over the state for your baristas work here. Yes, and this our barista is Galena. She's been with us for 15 years and she does make the best cappuccino in Reno. It all starts with the ingredients too and you don't skimp when it comes to the coffee, the gourmet coffee that you serve here. No, we use Actron Coffee Science and they are a local company and their coffee is consistent and good and people compliment us on it all the time. Oh, that is heaven. Oh, that is fantastic. It is the best, absolutely Thanks, the Mitch. best. You never know who you're gonna run into at Joseph's Vienna Cafe and Bakery. And today, John Drendel, one of the founders of Bradley, Drendel and Janae, uh, here having breakfast. I understand that you've been a regular here for a couple of days. I've been a regular here since 1980 when Joseph, about that time, opened this restaurant, and it was very small, maybe four tables. He was from Vienna. And I understand you eat here pretty regularly, too. I, uh, I'm in here every day. It's local. The uh, help is terrific. It's just a, a local restaurant that is genuine, friendly, with excellent food. They're oh. great. Sonia, we've caused a lot of mouths to water and made a lot of people hungry, and I'm sure right now they want to know how they can come down here and find you. Well, we're located in the Moana West Shopping Center on Moana and Lakeside. You can find us online at josephsvienna.com. And our phone number is 775-825-0451. That's Sonia with Joseph's Vienna Bakery and Cafe. Thank you so much Thank for you, being Thank you, Mitch. Thank you very much. For information on this guest or to see this show in its entirety, visit nvbusinesschronicles.com. While you're there, you can watch all of our past shows on the Chronicles page and stay connected with us by following us on our social media. For information on becoming a guest on our show, contact us at info at nvbusinesschronicles.com. 
We hope you enjoyed the show. Thanks for watching. Tune in next week at the same time for more from Nevada Business Chronicles. Yes, she can go bowling on Friday. Yes, of course. Thank you, Allie. And tell Amber I love her.